Jesus. As we are gathered here to hear from God, to see what God is going to say to each one of us. So today, the lesson is, let us love one another. That's going to be our lesson. Before we begin, let's open with prayer. My Lord, my God, the glory, the honor we give to you this morning, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, for all the prayers you have answered for us. And some prayers you said, wait. And then some prayers you said, no. And today, my God, bless us with your wisdom, your knowledge, and open our understanding, help our unbelief, Lord God. Jesus, may we hear with our ears, Lord God, just as you have spoken to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. Hear what the Spirit has to say. So today, my God, Jesus, yes, we will hear and understand what you're saying to each one of us. In your name we ask. Amen. We should love others because God so loved us. As we know the scripture, John 3 and 16, where the scripture says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And as we read the scriptures here, 1 John chapter 4, verse 11. Here the scripture says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Amen. So let's read John 3, 16 and 17. Here the scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And verse 17 it says, For God sent not his Son and to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Here, when he said that he sent his son into the world, or when it says that he loved, so loved the world. Here he's talking about the people the people that he created in the beginning with Adam and how humanity went into sin when they disobeyed God. So here now he said because he loves people, because he loved each one of us, because he loved me, that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. Hallelujah. So we should realize that God's love is powerful to save from sin. Okay? God's love will not interfere with the will of a person who desires to live in sin. Amen? We are not going to heaven because of the love of God. We are going 
to heaven because we love God and He loves us also we obey Him. Amen? If we love God, we're going to obey Him. Obedience is the one that's going to take us to heaven. Amen? Hallelujah! Because love, the love of God allows us to make bad decisions. He's not going to break down our will. He's not going to grab us and pull him, pull us to himself. But his love is going to give us a chance to repent of our sins. Even though we're sinners in the world, the love of God reaches for each one of us. The love of God pulls us towards himself out of eternal damnation. Amen? You understand it? The love of God in the Old Testament, the tabernacle, there was a white linen cord that holds a tabernacle down. These ropes, the white linen cord, it connects to the brass nail that's found into the earth. And that's Jesus being buried. So the love of God, we should realize that Jesus went into the tomb because he loved us. And these nine line ropes, it pulls the tabernacle together. It tightens it down. So when the storm comes, it doesn't blow away. So that's the symbol of the love of God that quiet nylon rope that they used to tie down the tabernacle. Amen? That's the love of God pulling on us all, of, all the time. Even when we were in sin, His love took at our heart, pulling it us to himself. Amen? Because, you know, God loves us the way we are. Amen? But he loves us too much. His love for us is too much for us to stay in our sins. He can, with His love, He can pull us out of our sins. Okay? Even though we have issues, even though we don't believe in the truth of the Word of God, His love is the one that's pulling us towards Him. Just as the line, line wrote, that held the tabernacle down in the Old Testament. So therefore, he tells us, let us love one another. Amen? Just as he loved us, 
Just as we read the scripture that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at that word there. Through him. The world through him might be saved. Amen. We have to always go through the door Therefore, Jesus tells us, I am the door. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. So Jesus is like the love of God personified. And this love of God walk among us. The Son of God, as we know Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's read verse John chapter 4, verse, verses 7 to 21. Here the scripture tells us, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's imagine the love that God has for us. And then here in verse 8 he says, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Amen. What we realize when we become a child of God, when we are born of the water and of the Spirit, we realize that God is love and that we should also love ourselves. Amen. Because God loved me, I must learn to love myself in order for me to love others, in order for me to understand what he meant by saying, let us love one another. Amen? If I don't love God, that means I don't love myself. When I don't love myself, then I don't know how to love others. Amen? You understand that? We have to love ourselves first because of God loves us. That way, it's easy to love others. The same way with forgiveness. God forgave my sins. So I should also forgive myself of the past because God forgave me. And to show the forgiveness of God, I Learn to forgive others. 
Amen. If I don't love myself, I wouldn't know how to love others. If I didn't know how to, that I had forgiven myself, I wouldn't know how to forgive others. Amen. Hallelujah. Then, as, as he said here, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. So if I don't forgive myself, that means I don't know God. I don't know how the love of God is. It has to start with me first before I begin to love others. For God is love. Amen. And verse 9 says, In this was the manifestation, the love of God towards us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Amen? We can't have eternal life. We can't have life without going through Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah! The manifestation of the love of God is Jesus. Amen? He showed that He loves us by Jesus through Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And then in verse 10 says, Herein is love. That not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the partition for our sins. Amen. He loved us. Amen. We didn't love God, but still He manifested Himself in a human body because of His love for us. Amen. He did it because He loved us and sent His Son to be the partition of our sins. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus is never a child of God. Because as the Son of God, Amen, it means He is. Jesus as the Son of God is the very image of God. Therefore, the Scripture tells us the fullness of the Godhead was in Him. Amen? Hallelujah! Think about it. The Son of God is the manifestation, the very image of God. So here the Scripture tells us His love was manifested through Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So His love took our sins. Amen? His love took our sins to the cross. 
Jesus hanging upon the cross. The love of God. The Son of God. The very image of who God is is on the cross. Amen? Hallelujah! Do we know Him? In that way, we just celebrated Christmas. We said the birth of Jesus. Amen. The love of God. Would you see him laying in a trough or manger? Amen. A manger, a trough, where the animals they get fed. They put the hay, the straw in the trough for the animals to eat. So Jesus is laid in the manger, the trough. Amen. The word for trough is chew. Chew. But you chewing on something. That's where the animal chew their food. Amen. So Jesus is laying on in the trough. Later on, he says what? I'm the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. So here is the bread of life laid in the truck. And he was wrapped in a swaddling cloth. That was known as a map, map rack. When you mount the cows, you use that rack to wipe the milk up. And he was right with it. Why? Because the word, Jesus the seed, is the man when we hear the word of God it feeds our spirit our soul the word of God is the man see all of the love of God of how he loved us he went through this for each one of us. Hallelujah. And he says in verse 11, Beloved, if God so love us, we are also to love one another. If God so loved us, notice that two letter word, S-O, so. So loved us. We can say, I love you. Or we can say, I so love you. Amen. So God so loved us. Think about it. If God so loved us, we should love ourselves and then love others. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. 
Amen. No creation has ever seen God. God is a spirit. Amen. He says what? If you love one another, then the spirit, this Holy Spirit, this invisible God is in us. Amen. And when he comes in us as the Holy Ghost, as the Holy Spirit, when he comes in us and God is love, he enters us with his love. Amen. Hallelujah. If we don't love others, that means the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is not in us. We may claim we have the Spirit, but is that Spirit in you holy or not? Or is it just another spirit, a definition spirit, the, the spirit of the Antichrist? What is that spirit in us that makes us don't like others, don't love others, don't know how to forgive? Amen. Hallelujah. That's why he said, God dwells in you, the Holy Ghost. And his love is perfected in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he had given us his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We dwell in Him. Amen. When did we went inside God? When did we enter into Jesus? We entered in when we are baptized with Jesus. Jesus was put in the tomb. When we go down in the water, after our repentance, we're baptized in the name of Jesus. That's when we entered into Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We dwell in him and he dwells in us because he had given us of his spirit the holy spirit the holy god god is a spirit he is holy so when the holy ghost comes in us he is in us Amen. Hallelujah. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Amen. John the Revelator and the rest of the apostles If you read your Bible carefully, you will see that they are saying we are the, a witness. We are a witness of God manifested in the flesh. We saw him. We saw the Son of God, Jesus. We walked with him. We talked with him. We listened to him. We saw the miracle that he did. We saw it. We saw him being betrayed. We saw him hanging on the cross. 
We saw him. We witnessed it when he, 39, 40 stripes were laid on him. We saw him raising the dead. We saw him cleansing the lepers. We saw him. Thus as here the scripture says, hereby we know him. We have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. You, what they're saying is the apostles, the apostolic, these Jewish apostolics, amen, after the Pentecost, they're saying, we saw the gospel of Jesus Christ. We saw the gospel, the salvation plan of Jesus, Jesus, that we saw him. We saw Acts 2 and 38. We saw him. That's what they were saying. Amen. He said we testify of the Father. Amen. We saw salvation. We saw now, we understand why the name Jesus, Yeshua, means salvation. We saw the gospel. We saw him being laid in the tomb. We saw him dying on the cross. We saw him on that resurrection morning. We saw him. I testify of it. John the Revelator here, he's saying it. I saw the love of God. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And then he says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. That means the very image of God. Amen, the Son of God. God dwell in him. And he is God. Amen. The fullness of the Godhead. The very image of God in Jesus. Amen. And that's why he said what? And he is God. And he is God. Verse 16. And we have known and believed the love of that God had sent had to us. Amen. We have known it. We have a we had a relationship. We had an intimacy with this love that God sent. Jesus. Amen. And believe the love that God has sent us. We believe Jesus. We believe the love of God. When he taught us his commandment, we listened to him. We believed because he opened our, our understanding and we saw him. We are a witness. Amen. He said, God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Do we live in God? Do we put on the armor of God? Well, the prophet Isaiah, he 
you prophesy, saying Jesus, he said, Jesus was talking, God was talking, said, they didn't want my covering. They didn't want my covering. They didn't want my armor. They didn't want to be in me. In other words, amen, they tried to be a Christian outside of me. Amen. God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. Amen. And God in him. The Holy Ghost. Wherein is our love made perfect? Amen. When we have the Holy Ghost. Because God is love. Our love is made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. What's he saying? Because of the love of God in us. We are bold. Okay. We, what he's saying, John the Revelator is saying is this, we are bold. We are not afraid of the judgment that is coming. We are not afraid of the tribulation that is coming. Because God, as the Holy Ghost, is in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, so are we in this world. Amen. We need to be bold with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 18 said, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Amen. Hallelujah. We follow Jesus. We carry our crosses after him. Amen. He forewarned us about the tribulation that's going to come. The tribulation that is coming. He says, be not afraid of it. If I am in you, you shouldn't be afraid of it. I'm the perfect love in you. So I cast all the fear out of me. When you hear of things that are going to come, he says, like the number 666, we as a we call ourselves Christian, we hit the panic button. We say it's coming, it's already, they're putting chip, a uh, microchip in you and there's already like this and that. But here, the Word of God is telling us, I am God, I am love in you, so there should be no fear in you. So don't be afraid of the judgment. Don't be afraid of the number 666. He's telling us that. Amen. Because he says what? He says, you are perfect in love. It should cast out fear. 
because fear torment all these end time. It's going to happen this way. It's going to happen that way. It is right here. It is right there. But here Jesus is telling us, don't be afraid. It's just going to torment you. He that fear is not made perfect in love. Amen. That means the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is not in you. Because you have fear. We love him. Because he first loved us. Amen. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because he loved us. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we can't say I love God and hate people. Amen. Hallelujah. He say, how can you not love somebody you see? But then you say, I love God, when you don't even see him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't it a wonder when Jesus said, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me a drink. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. Amen. How can I say I have the love of God when I can't love another to help out? Verse 21, and his commandment have we from him, that he who loved God loved his brother also. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think about it. Do you love your brothers? Do you love a sinner that lives down the road from you? Do you love the sinners that live by your church? Do you help out? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. With these words, I encourage you that we love one another. If we love one another, we show that God is in us. If we love another, we are a witness of God that he is love. If we love another, we are a witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ whom all the apostles have seen it, have witnessed it. They saw Jesus. They held his nail-scarred hand. They looked upon his feet that was nail-scarred. They saw him alive 
with his spiritual body, with the love of God alive. Amen. Hallelujah. With these words, I encourage you that we learn to love one another and let us get inside of Christ in his perfect love. He will cast out all the fears and let people talk about the end time the way they want to. But don't be afraid of it because you know God. Hallelujah. Let's close this with prayer. My Lord, my God, I thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, as you stood off the throne, because you loved us so much. You didn't want us to be in sin. You stood up, stood up off your throne. You took off your royal garment, your crown, and you stepped into a human body as the Son of God. And yes, you laid in a trunk a manger. Yes, my God, you were wrapped with a claw, a swaddling claw. You are the word that is the map. Jesus, yes, my God, Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, we are a sinner. Say by your grace. And for myself, Lord Jesus, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Jesus, forgive me, Lord God, when I fall short of your glory, when I don't show your love. Jesus, forgive me, Lord God, as you touch each one of your children in this ministry, Lord God. Jesus, answer their prayers when they ask in your name. And in your name we ask. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus.